Here we are at the main building of NICAF, where we carry out our day-to-day CAN3Net related activities. However, a large part of what we do actually happens somewhere else. I'm Jordan from the CAN3Net NICAF group. Today we're going to the PMU Hall. The PMU Hall is one of the last remaining buildings of the NICAF Accelerator Complex, which was active during the 80s and 90s. But what is happening today at the PMU Hall? The building, located on the northwest side of Science Park, is getting a new life. NICEF has a leading role in the design and implementation of the CAN3NA telescope. The PMU Hall is now the new hub of the technical activities, in particular the assembly of detector components, of CAN3NET at NICEF. Let us enter and take a look inside. At the PMU Hall, we must also respect safety rules to help prevent the spread of the coronavirus. Our first stop today is in the storage room, where Ronald has received a package. Right, so, if you want to build a neutrino telescope, so if you want to record the faint light resulting from neutrino interactions in the deep Mediterranean waters, you'll need these photomultiplier tubes. These are the single most important elements of the KM3 net detector. They are capable of detecting uh, single photons and digitizing their signal. Now these arrive in large quantities to us from Japan, uh, large quantities because to instrument a cubic kilometer of water you need 130,000 of them. The thing with these tubes is, is that you cannot just operate them in the high pressures in salt water. Right? That would not be a good idea. So we need to protect them. We need to protect them and make sure that they see the light and that the signal they generate uh, is digitized and sent to shore. Now, this equipment to operate them in the Mediterranean seas are made here in the PMU hall. Let's first have a look how digital optical modules, DOMS, which house the PMTs, are made. Hey René. Now, here we see René installing the PMTs into support structures. A top and a bottom support structure contain together 31 PMTs. Now, like many of the came net mechanical components, they are designed at NICEF. The function is not only to contain the PMTs and define their position, but they also contain many other components. Reflector rings are installed around the PMTs to increase the light yield. The next part of integration happens on the workbenches. René continues by installing the electronic boards in glass hemispheres which already contain some supporting mechanics. Here we see a central logic board which can timestamp the PMT signals to nanosecond accuracy and has a laser transceiver to send the data to shore. These are made in Dutch industry and like much of the KM3Net electronics and optical components they have a large design input from NICAF. After fusion splicing of the internal fibers of the top hemisphere, the hemispheres are ready to receive the support structures with the PMTs. All the internal components are now installed in the two hemispheres that make up a DOM. The DOM is now thus ready to undergo its first set of tests. We do this inside the dark, where we today find Thijs. Here we perform the functional test of our optical modules. On this table here you can see two optical modules ready for testing. And as you can see they're still open. This is very important because here we do checks like checking if the PMTs are connected properly, checking if the electronics work and a series of other tests before we actually close the modules. Because when we close them it's extremely difficult to replace components. When these modules pass the functional tests, they will go back to the lab where they will be closed. After successfully passing the functional test, the dome hemispheres are moved to the filling and gluing station, where the top support is attached to the internal mechanics of the top hemisphere, and both hemispheres are filled with a 
optical transparent two component gel which hardens over time. The gel fills the space between the gloss on one side and the PMTs and support structure on the other and in this way implements an optical coupling. You can see the level rising while the space is filled. The last step in the assembly of a dome is the joining of the two hemispheres to make one full sphere. No glue or equivalent is used to keep the two halves together, it's just glass on glass. The pressures in the deep sea will keep the dome shut. After joining the two halves, the dome is slightly evacuated and a titanium band is put around the otherwise difficult to handle uh, glass sphere, and which allows the integration into the rest of the assembly. The fully assembled dome is now ready for the final acceptance test. It's placed in a light tight dark box, which is moved to the dark room where we today find Brian. So the domes have been in the dark in this box for 24 hours. And we want to you know they're already in the dark in the box, right? You don't need to be in the dark for 24 hours. Anyway, the doms have been in the dark in this box for 24 hours, which is sealed to be completely light tight. So we take some temperature and sound sensor measurements, and then we want to take a test to make sure the PMTs and their uh, signal rates are completely okay. And if the test passes, the doms are ready to go to be integrated. Congratulations, you now have a fully operational, complete dom. At NICF, we have the capacity to build 8 to 12 of these doms per week. To instrument a cubic kilometer of seawater, you will need more than 4,000 of these. Hey Raza, what are you doing? Now we move the doms to the storage, where we put them behind black curtains, as they are light sensitive and we want to keep the dark rate low. Now they have to wait to be integrated into a DU. Now they have to wait to be integrated into a DU. Now they have to wait to be integrated into a DU. In Camtrinet, the domes are organized along vertical lines anchored at the sea bottom. These structures are called detection units or DUs. Each DU contains 18 domes with the spacing between the domes of 9 or 38 meters. This results in lines which are close to 200 or close to 700 meters tall. Put 10 of these buildings on top of each other and you will approximately have the height of one of our detection units. Wow! And now Dan will explain the DU integration activities here in the PMUL. So now before we move the dumps from the cabinets to the table, the first thing that we do is that we unwind this long cable on the table first. And this cable uh, contains all the optical fibers and the electrical cables to provide power to all the dons. And this is an oil pressure cable, so there's oil inside to withstand the pressures of the seawater at the depth at, uh, at which we deploy KM3Net. And at the location of every dom, what you see is that we have this breakout box. And if I open this breakout box, you'll see that one of the fibers is branched off here, and also the two electrical uh, cables. And the first step in, in uh, in the production of a detection unit, or a DU, is that we connect the DOM electrical cables to these electrical cables and we splice the optical fiber from the DOM to the optical fiber that runs in this very long cable. Hey Jean-Paul, nice work. So the next step in DU production happens here where we have a special kind of breakout box that you see over here. We call this the anchor breakout box because ultimately it will be mounted on the anchor at the bottom of the sea. And what you see here is that the 18 fibers that are coming from the doms and that are now connected to the doms end up in this anchor breakout box. And here we need to make an additional 18 splices because these fibers need to be spliced 
to the 18 fibers that are now moving further upstream to this interface first. This is what we call the base penetrator and that's the interface between the outside world, so the, the seawater here, and ultimately what we call the base container on this side. And the base container contains all the electronics to power the DU and also acts as an interface to the, to the shore. Next step is that we need to cover and close these breakout boxes. So first of all, the anchor bob, but also for all the separate DOM breakout boxes. And once all these breakout boxes are covered and closed, the last step that we need to perform is that we need to fill these remaining sections with oil. And that's why we have this oil filling system up here um, with these tubes that, through which the oil runs and then we fill up these last sections. And after that, really this part of the U production is done. Well, thank you Dan, but is that really all? And then there's just one final thing that we need to do here at NICAF. And that thing is that we pick up every DOM and then we put it in transportation boxes such as these. And now it's really ready for the next step. We have a truck pick up this entire transportation box and then it's on to the next DU production site before we can finally deploy our DUs. This DU is being shipped to the southern French coast in Marseille, where it will undergo final preparations and be deployed to the rest of our detector, enabling us to conduct some beautiful science.